my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight. Visions of rapture burst on my sight. Angels in descending bring from above. Echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. Good morning, I'm Khalil. Welcome to Christ United Methodist Church Online. If you are worshiping with us for the first time, thank you for tuning in. It's great to have you with us. During worship this morning, we will sing songs of praise, pray for ourselves and the world, and hear a sermon from Pastor Howard that will encourage us to look to God as the source of provision for our needs. Please join me in prayer. O oh God, who knows our every need before we can even ask, you provide all our needs and some of our wants. You bless us all. You make us truly thankful and empower us to bless others from the gifts you have given us for the glory of your name. Amen. On behalf of the congregation, we welcome you, we bless you, we behold the Christ in you. Standing on the promises I cannot fail, listening 
Scripture reading will be taken from Exodus chapter 16, verse 1 through 15. The whole Israelite community set out from Elam and came to the Sin Desert, which is located between Elam and Sinai. They set out on the 15th day of the second month, after they had left the land of Egypt. The whole Israelite community complained against Moses and Aaron in the desert. The Israelites said to them, Oh, how we wish that the Lord had just put us to death while we were still in the land of Egypt. There we could sit by the pots cooking meat and eat our fill of bread. Instead, you brought us out into this desert to starve, whole assembly to death. Then the Lord said to Moses, I'm going to make bread rain down from the sky for you. The people will go out each day and gather just enough for that day. In this way, I'll test them to see whether or not they will follow my instruction. On the sixth day, when they measure out what they have collected, it will be twice as much as they collected on other days. So Moses and Aaron said to all the Israelites, this evening you will know that it is the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt. And in the morning, you will see the Lord's glorious presence, because your complaints against the Lord have been heard. Who are we? Why blame us? Moses continued, The Lord will give you meat to eat in the evening and fill of bread in the morning, because the Lord heard the complaints you made against him. Who are we? Your complaints aren't against us, but against the Lord. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole Israelite community, Come near to the Lord, because he's heard your complaints. As Aaron spoke to the whole Israelite community, they turned to look toward the desert. And just then, the glorious presence of the Lord appeared in the cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses, I've heard the complaints of the Israelites. Tell them, at twilight, you will eat meat. And in the morning, you will have your fill of bread. Then you will know that I am the Lord, your God. In the evening, a flock of quail flew down and covered the camp. And in the morning, there was a layer of dew all around the camp. When the layer of dew lifted, there on the desert surface within the flakes, as thin as frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to each other, What is this? They didn't know what it was. Moses said to them, This is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. If your children are, are not already around the screen, I invite you to give them the best seat in the house. This is their special time. Good morning, young disciple. How are you doing? I hope everyone is doing well. I want you to know how much I've missed you for the last couple of weeks. Now today I want to talk about something a little bit different, but not so different for me. I'd like to ask you a question. Do you like to eat? Well, if you're like me, you do. And what's your favorite thing to eat? I'll wait. Now, my favorite thing to eat is brownies. Now, what if every morning you could open the front door and walk out into the yard and pick up your favorite food that you just thought about or said out loud? All of it you could eat. That would be great, wouldn't it? Now, we read in the Bible about a time when something almost exactly like that happened. God's people, the Israelites, 
had been held as slaves in Egypt for many years. When they were finally freed and finally left Egypt, they were looking for the land that God had promised them. Now, after they had been wandering around in the desert for almost two months, the people started to grumble and complain against their leaders, Moses and his brother Aaron. They grumbled, just like I imagine their stomachs were grumbling out there in the wilderness. Can you grumble and complain with me? Oh, we had it so much better when we were Egypt, I'm sure they complained. At least we had plenty to eat. God, you have brought us out here in the desert to starve us to death. They complained about not having food. But guess what happened? God heard the people complaining and told Moses that in the evening, he would send birds called quail to cover the camp so that the people would have meat to eat. And not only that, but in the morning, after the dew on the grass was gone, there would be manna on the ground for everyone to eat. All they had to do was go out, pick it up, and eat it. Now, why do you think God would do something like this for those grumblers and complainers? I believe God did it so they would know that he loved them and would take care of them wherever he was leading them. God hadn't brought them out of Egypt to let them starve in the desert. No, God was going to see to it that they made it all the way to the land that he had promised them. Sometimes you and I grumble and complain, don't we? When do you complain? Well, I complain sometimes when I don't get my way. I sometimes complain when there's things that I want that I do not have. And sometimes I find myself complaining over the smallest, ridiculous things that I can think of. But did you know that when we complain, we sometimes forget that God loves us and that she provides us with everything that we need. Instead of grumbling and complaining, we can say, thank you, God, for all the ways that you have provided for me. And thank you in advance for all the ways that you will provide for me. And you know what? We can do that right now. Let's pray. Dear God, sometimes, oh God, we complain and we grumble. When we do, help us, God, to remember that every good thing that we have comes from you and that you have promised to provide for all of our needs. God, we thank you in advance for all that you will provide. It's in Jesus' name that we pray and give thanks. Amen. As the newly freed Israelites make their way from the land of Egypt into the Promised Land, we are reminded that they followed a God who would provide, and the same God of provision walks with us today. Please pray with me. Let the wisdom of your word rain down on us like manna and feed us, that we may be strengthened to do the work to which we are called, for the glory and honor of your name. Amen.
in the name of Jesus, come alive, in the name of Jesus, this is the house of miracles, we bring everything to the feet of Jesus, everything in the name of Jesus, this is the house of miracles. morning, I'd like to read another scripture that will be the focal point for our sermon this morning. Would you please hear as I read the words taken from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 14, 13 to 21. When Jesus heard about John, he withdrew in a boat to a deserted place by himself. When the crowds learned this, they followed him on foot from the cities. When Jesus arrived and saw a large crowd, he had compassion for them and healed those who were sick. That evening, his disciples came and said to him, this is an isolated place and it's getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go into the villages and buy food for themselves. But Jesus said to them, there's no need to send them away. You." give them something to eat. They replied, we have nothing here except five loaves of bread and two fish. He said, bring them here to me. He ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. He took the five loaves of bread and the two fish, looked up to heaven, blessed them and broke the loaves apart and gave them to his disciples. Then the disciples gave them to the crowd. 
Everyone ate until they were full, and they filled 12 baskets with the leftovers. About 5,000 men, plus women and children, had eaten. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. This morning, I am going to preach about the miracle of provision. Would you pray with me? Gracious God, we thank you that even right now, you are providing spiritual food for us. We ask, O oh Lord, that it would be enough, that everyone's heart, spirit, and bellies might be filled with your word, and that they would go out with strength into your world to share this good news. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. The miracle of provision. Our passage for this morning begins after the beheading of John the Baptist. John the Baptist was not just any ordinary person in Jesus' life. John the Baptist was his cousin, the child who leaped in Elizabeth's belly when a pregnant Mary visited them. John was the one who played with Je Jesus as they were growing up and who later baptized Jesus in the Jordan River. Cousins who had perhaps played together as children. And now, Jesus has to face the fact that his cousin has been murdered by King Herod. So Jesus left everyone to spend some time all by himself. Maybe Jesus wanted time to grieve or to rest, to try to make sense of it all. The Bible doesn't exactly say why Jesus went away, but what we do know is that Jesus was attempting to go where no one else was. Yet when he arrived, the crowd was there waiting to meet him. They were so eager to be in his presence and so in need of his miraculous power that they walked miles following him to this deserted place. And I just want to pause and point out that sometimes following Jesus will lead us to deserted places. There are some who may tell you that the Christian walk will result in immediate gratification and earthly reward, that following Jesus will allow you to name it and claim it, whatever it is, that if you follow Jesus, your life will be filled with prosperity and joy. But following Jesus is not a life full of ease or one absent of sorrow. Following Jesus doesn't mean that you won't have trouble. Sometimes following Jesus will lead you into deserted places, lonely places, uneasy and even unsafe places. But Matthew records that when Jesus saw the great crowd, that he had compassion on them. Yes, it was an inopportune time. Jesus was grieving, and maybe what he wanted was for someone to show compassion for him in his time of grief. But the Bible says that rather than receive compassion, Jesus had compassion for them. Our hurts, our disappointments, our pain, can cause us to become callous, or they can help us have compassion. At this inopportune time, God was setting the stage for a miracle, but it required Jesus to rearrange his plans, to rearrange his thoughts, and to place his needs on the back burner. Now, the disciples had not reached that state of enlightenment yet. Jesus was quickly able to pivot from focusing on his grief and his pain to the needs of those who were before him. But the disciples, not so much. Although Jesus had rearranged his time in order to cure the sick, the disciples wanted to work on their own time. When it was evening, they were ready to clock out. They went to Jesus and said, Jesus, it's getting late. There's nothing out here. 
no Whole Foods, no McDonald's, no Grubhub for delivery. Send the people away so they can go and buy food for themselves. Jesus' reply was as shocking as it turns out to be true. There's no need to send them away. You give them something to eat, Jesus says. And here we witness the first miracle of multiplication in this story. Jesus multiplies the disciples' compassion for others. The disciples wanted to send the people off to fend for themselves, knowing that the neighboring villages were small and probably ill-equipped to meet the needs of this large and unexpected crowd of Jesus' followers. You remember how the shelves at the grocery store looked at the beginning of the pandemic? Supply could not keep up with the demand, and many of us had to leave the store without the toilet paper, without the food, and without the supplies that we needed. Stores even had to ration the number of items that shoppers could purchase to supply as many of the needs for as many of the people as they could. Now, the same would have been true for the first century shop. This wasn't a regular holiday or feast day where they would have known in advance to stock up. Many would have gone hungry for lack of supply. And since Jesus had compassion for the multitude, he called on the disciples to do the same. Jesus reminds us that the first ingredient in a miracle is compassion. We must be concerned for the sufferings and misfortunes of others. It is not enough for us as followers of Jesus to be content with the provision that we have received from God. Jesus calls on each of us to be concerned about the needs of our neighbors. Now, after multiplying their compassion, Jesus then changed their calculators. Immediately after Jesus commanded the disciples to feed the multitude, the disciples replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. Their immediate reaction was to focus on what they thought they lacked. The the disciples didn't believe they had enough food to feed the 5,000 family groups before them. In the account of this miracle in John's Gospel, we are told that Philip said, Lord, a year's wages would not be enough to buy everyone a single bite. I think Philip was the CPA of the disciples. Can't you see him as he whipped out his handheld eye abacus? He said, let's see, 15,000 people at $2 a mill divided by a month's wages carry the one Take away the five plus 100. He had it all figured out. But God's math is different from ours. When we pass out food, we divide it. But when Jesus passes out food, he multiplies it. Human math says five loaves and two fish divided by about 15,000 equals impossible. But God's math says Five loaves plus two fish times the power of God equals 15,000 stomachs full. For all of us who do the math like Philip, God says, your math may be correct, but your method is all wrong. Right now, we are looking at a deficit in the Christ UMC budget. Our expected income is far less than our expected needs. Now we could, like the disciples, throw up our hands and say, we have nothing here except five loaves of bread and two fish. We can't run a church on that. We can't reach out to the community with that. We can't feed the hungry masses with that. We can't make new disciples with that. It's not enough, Jesus. Or, we can do what Jesus asked his disciples to do. Couple what little we have with faith and bring them both to Jesus. In his book, Made for a Miracle, 
and it's the book that we are studying on Thursday nights during Lent. Mike Slaughter asserts that every miracle has two components that must work together, divine intervention and human initiative. Both components are required for God-initiated, Jesus-multiplying miracles of provision. The miracle of multiplication and provision began to unfold when the disciples became willing to let go and let God. It seemed totally illogical. How could so little do so much for so many? But the truth is that you and I, together in community, become the source for God's miracles for the masses. We find the life by giving our gifts of life, both spiritual and physical for God's provision and saving work in the lives of others. We must release in order to experience God's miracle of increase. We must lose our life to find it. Jesus blessed the meager meal the disciples had gathered and then entrusted them with the mission of distribution. Disciples of Jesus are called to be God's FedEx delivery system throughout the planet. And yes, we deliver on weekends and holidays. We need to remind ourselves daily that we are God's way of delivering heaven's resources into the lives of God's children. Sometimes we take a problem to the Lord, waiting and wanting God to resolve the situation for us. And if we're not waiting on God, we're waiting on some other entity. The government should do something about this. The school system should do something about that. The Western heads of state should do something to end this war in Ukraine. But sometimes God puts the onus back on us. God shares the responsibility with us. You give them something to eat. You help feed the hungry in your community. You help provide health services for people without resources. You be a peacemaker in your small part of the world. We often focus on what we don't have or what we've lost, but God does not engage in multiplication miracles of provision with what we've lost. God makes miracles with what we have left. God isn't going to repair your marriage using the love you've lost. God will repair your marriage using the love that you have left. God isn't going to use the money you lost to reinvigorate your finances. He's going to bless what you have left. God isn't going to heal the finances of this church through the people who have left or who have not returned since the pandemic. God is going to multiply and provide through the people who are here right now. God can and will use the small stuff, the seemingly insignificant things, the stuff we think is useless to perform a multiplication miracle of provision. God can use what little time you have, what little talent you have, what little money you have, and even what little desire you have to provide for a multitude of people, including you. Because I don't want you to miss this. Those five loaves of bread and two small fish wasn't even enough to feed the 12 disciples. But because they had compassion rather than contempt for those in need, because they handed what little they had over to Jesus, because they were willing to work to ensure that all 5,000 households were fed, God provided a meal for them too. Jesus multiplied that tiny meal until everyone was fed. Not only was there enough for 5,000 men plus all the women and children, there were leftovers. It's God's nature to always give more than enough. 
One of my favorite Bible promises says, Now to him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us. In the original Greek, three powerful adverbs pile on top of each other to increase the force of that promise. Exceedingly, abundantly, above literally means super abundant, beyond measure, more than enough. You may be thinking right now, Pastor, I have nothing except this little bit of free time, this little bit of talent, this little bit of money, this little bit of faith. But Jesus is telling me and is telling you, it is enough. Bring it to me. Bring me your little bit and watch with great expectation as God uses us and what little we have to work a multiplication miracle of provision for the world. Amen. Let us pray for the needs of the world, saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, who hears our cries and pities, our groans, you are ever faithful. We come to you with our petitions for ourselves and our community, for our church and its leaders, that they may be of open mind and open heart, that they may be the Christian leaders that you have called them to be, and that the church be an instrument of love, justice, peace, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our country and global community, that we all may be peaceful, fair, and respectful of all peoples, no matter the religion, color, gender, or any kind of government. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those in Russia and Ukraine, and all the places around the world riddled by war and devastation, that all may experience peace and sovereignty, and that safety and provision might be attained for all seeking safe harbor as refugees. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our local community, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who are overlooked in our society, the poor, the young, the old, the bereaved, and the oppressed. Help us to see them and to be with them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the special people and intentions that we hold in our hearts.
gracious and loving God, we know that you hear us and are always with us. And we thank you in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Jesus' power was displayed through miracles, healing the sick, freeing the oppressed, restoring the broken, and resurrecting from the dead. But did you know that Jesus' miracles still happen today, healing still happens in our midst and freedom is possible and restoration from all the things that are broken restoration is ours because resurrection brings new life do you believe in miracles good morning and welcome to christ church update i'm khalil farid this week, we have several ways that you may show your love for God, neighbors, and friends. First, you may experience the great joy of congregational worship online and in person. We hope that you will join us in person next week at 10.30 a.m. But if you can't make it, please join us online for worship at 8 a.m. on Facebook Live and at our virtual coffee hour at 9 a.m. on Zoom. You may also join us in prayer on Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. on Facebook Live. Beginning this Sunday, March 13th, masks are no longer required. Masks will be optional for all activities within the church, including worship. The CDC and the state of New Jersey continue to recommend masks for unvaccinated individuals and those who are immunocompromised. Members of the congregation should worship from home if they have any signs or symptoms of illness, have tested positive for COVID-19, are awaiting the results of a COVID-19 test, or have had any known exposure to anyone who has tested positive for COVID-19. Please join Pastor Howard in a five-week Lenten book study this Thursday. We will continue our focus on miracles as we read. Made for a Miracle by Mike Slaughter. We will be reminded that when miracles occur, we have a role to play. We will meet on Thursday nights at 7.30 p.m. on Zoom. If you have lost a loved one, it is not too late to join Grief Share, our 13-week grief support group. We will meet again on Saturday at 12 noon on Zoom. Please contact Judy Hopkins at the email below to join this or any other small groups. We have grocery gift cards for sale. If you buy groceries each week, and I'm sure you do, you may purchase grocery gift cards for ShopRite or Stop and Shop through the church. A percentage of each card goes to the church while you spend the full value of the card. It's a win-win for all of us. Please contact Sally Trainer at the email below to make arrangements to purchase and pick up cards. Christ UMC continues to support Fish Hospitality. You can help by donating funds, meals, and supplies for guest families being housed in hotel rooms. Please contact Janelle and Tariq Calloway with any questions or concerns at the email below. Thank you in advance for all your help. Please consult the electronic bulletin using the QR code in the narthex or consult Nancy's Friday email for detailed information 
on all of the announcements. And if you have not done so already, please like and follow us on our social media platforms. Great is God's mercy toward us. Let us offer a portion of what God has given with humble and grateful hearts. You may give electronically through Zelle, PayPal, or by check to the church as we thank God in advance for the gifts that you will give to the church. Let us pray. Lord, giver of all good gifts, thank you for the resources gathered here. Use these gifts for the advancement of your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Before our charge and final blessing, I would like to share an announcement with you. As you can see, I am smiling. And I am smiling because I am happy to report that after two years of working through RIM, after a 65-page paper, after four sessions of interviews this week, I have been approved um, by BOOM to move forward towards transferring my orders. Let us all rejoice together. I want to thank each of you for giving me the time away these past two weeks to study and to prepare. I want to thank you for your prayers and your texts and your emails of well wishes for me as I continue to work towards this goal. And most of all, I want to thank you for the love and the patience that you have shown as I have gr often grumbled my way through the process. It is a joyous day for me, and I just can't thank you and God enough for the pleasure of being soon to be, after annual conference, an elder in full connection to the Greater New Jersey Annual Conference. Amen. And now for our charge and final blessing. Rest in the knowledge that God always provides. Therefore, give and love with a generous heart, for this honors God who is most generous and loved. Beloved, may God continue to bless and provide for you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. As always, stay safe, stay strong, and stay in love with God and your neighbor. Have a blessed week.
This is 